Hey everybody, I want to go over a quick tutorial with you guys on how to get PlayStation 2 games up and running on your Steam Deck using PCSX2. So first I'm going to show you a couple different ways we can download PCSX2. Then I'm going to show you how we can load in custom textures as well as you can see there. And then I'm going to show you how we can edit the cheat files to enable things like 60fps and widescreen hacks as well. So let's get going. So one other thing before we get started too is you're going to need the PlayStation 2 BIOS files. So for legal purposes, I can't show you how to download those things, but a simple Google search will pull that stuff up for you. So moving on to the download here. So there are a couple ways to download and install PCSX2. I prefer to do it through their official website now versus doing it through the Discover app since the version is more up to date. So if you come on over here to their official website and then you come here to download and then scroll down here to nightly builds and then Linux drop down. And then you're gonna to wanna to download the AVX2 version, which is the most updated version. And then here you'll see the nightly release list, which is past versions if you ever wanna download past releases as well. And then the download links, which is Windows, Linux, and Mac, the release date, and then a description for that release and the page links. All right, so after you finish downloading the build that you want, you're to come down here to the arrow, say show in folder, double click the app image, say execute, and there we go. So these are all the games I have in here. And then if this is your first time booting up, you'll probably get the setup screen asking you to point to where your BIOS folder is, as I talked about in the beginning. So run through those things if you can, and then we're gonna get into the settings here. So one tip I wanted to show too here before we get started. So if you're ever dealing with Windows and not being able to see like your um, kind of like close and confirm buttons that may be on this window as well, what you can do is you can right click and you can say more actions and you can say keep above others and that'll allow you to see those buttons there a little bit more which are restore defaults and close and you can do that there and yeah. So for the interface settings, it's going to probably be more preferential into what you like. So run through some of these settings here, look at the descriptions, and take them on and off depending on what you want. And the same thing goes for the game display settings down here. For preferences, you can change up your theme to different colors there. And then for automatic updater section, we have the nightly build, which is the sections that I showed you that we downloaded from their official website. So have that one selected there and then decide whether or not you want it to check for updates. So for your game list setting here, this is pretty much just your folder where your PS2 ROMs are. So you can add a folder by coming up here to the right and clicking on this little plus folder here. And then if you have your ROMs on your SD card, you can find your SD card by going to the forward slash run and then media and then MMC and that'll be your SD card there. So one more thing here, for scan recursively, that means do you want it to scan the folder inside of this folder? Usually if your ROMs are already located here, this won't really matter much, but I usually have a tick just in case. So coming on down to the BIOS setting. So as I explained in the beginning, wherever you downloaded your BIOS folder, browse here and then point to that folder and then refresh list and then everything should pop up there. So for fast boot, this pretty much skips the whole PS2 startup sequence. I always have this checked. I've never noticed a problem. So um, yeah. So coming on to the emulation settings here. So under speed control, we'll see normal speed and that's what our game will normally run at. Our fast forward speed when we turn on fast forward and then slow motion speed here. And make sure enable speed limiter is ticked on as well so your game doesn't go crazy fast. And then for system settings, I never really messed with these things much. I've heard of people having actual use for these and it's worked, but I haven't come across it yet. Um, just really kind of make sure enable cheats is ticked on down here. And then frame pacing, same thing. I haven't had a need to use it yet, but there is a need. And so, yeah. 
So moving on to the graphics settings here. So there is no such thing as best settings system-wide for graphics. It's really on a game-to-game -game basis. Some games work better with different settings, like um, upscaling fixtures I've seen work better with um, Prince of Persia, and some haven't needed it. Another one was like um, a half-pixel offset for God of War, and that kind of got rid of the blurriness on the PSP version as well. So different games require different settings, but for the most part, I think this really kind of gets me in the door. So run through these settings here and kind of let me know if you're having issues with the game also, and I'll kind of run through things and see what I can do. Um, texture aggressive, you can kind of turn that off. Uh, texture replacement, and then I'll show you how to replace textures as well once we kind of finish running through all the basic settings and the cheats as well and that kind of stuff post-processing settings, OSD, um, show FPS I like to do just because it shows the FPS on the game because when you use the Steam um, OS FPS show or two, it, it's not perfect and it really gives you a false reading compared to what the emulator does. So you want to make sure you have that one ticked also if you're trying to kind of monitor your FPS in a game. Um, but yeah, there's some more settings you can run through there. Go for it and see what you like. Uh, advanced settings here, yeah, I really and don't mess with that stuff much, and yeah, so we'll move on to the audio setting here. So the audio settings are one of those settings I really don't mess around with much, but there's like volume control and stuff you can mess around with here also. So moving on over into the memory card settings here. So you'll see I already have a memory card in port 1, and then I have a few more cards created here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is designate a folder to where you want to save these cards into by going to Browse, and then choosing the folder. And then come on down here to Create, and then enter your memory card name that you want and then choose the size of the memory card. I usually go with 32 and it hasn't given me any issues. You'll see if you go with the 64 as a low compatibility warning and it may not work with many games, so be careful of that. It's also re recommended to do a folder. I haven't actually ever done folders, so I'm not too sure on that one, but um, I've transferred this between Windows operating systems and this one, so this has worked. So I would say kind of stick with that one if you want. Um, or try the folder, and yeah, and then these settings down here I always leave checked as well, so yeah. So moving on over into the folder settings here, so this is your folders directories. So for this directory, it's going to be where you're storing your shaders, your indices, and your game list data. Coverage directory, snapshots directory, and your save states directory. So your save states are kind of like quick saves if you're not too sure of what that is. And then your memory cards are their own separate saves. So save states are usually only transferable between the same build, like this 1.7.37 up here. So if you ever upgrade to a different build, you won't be able to transfer those save states, but you'll be able to do the memory card saves. So keep that in mind when saving states also. And then there's achievement settings here. I have never tried this, but um, go for it if you want. And yeah. So from here, we're going to go to settings and then controllers. And then we're going to use this controller here. And so for binding keys, there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either click on the box here and then actually press the button and it will bind it there. Or you can go to automatic mapping and then Steam Virtual Gamepad and that'll bind the keys also kind of as a wide bind. And then you can come over here also to settings, and then it's got stuff like analog dead zone, analog sensitivity, and macros you can set up here. Don't usually mess around with that stuff, but that stuff's there if you need it. And yeah. So usually I do mess around with the hotkeys also. I think save states are super important to set those up. Um, kind of selecting your next save state, and then your previous one also, and kind of flipping back and forth. Um, and then kind of your system was there. And as I was talking about in the beginning with the fast forward and slow motion, that's there also. And toggling full screen is also helpful. So yeah.
So come on over to the main menu here. Hopefully you're seeing some games now in your list. So once you've got everything set up, you can right click the game now and click on properties. And then these are gonna be your specific settings for the game. So if you come on down here, you'll see we see kind of a new checkbox kind of look. So if we click on it again, you'll see it turns into a check mark and then off and then kind of a white box again. What that white box is, it means that if the general settings of PCX2 say to turn this on, then it's going to run with it on. So you'll see down here in the graphics setting, that's kind of how this is. If the general settings of PCX2 don't have VSync on, it's not going to turn on. But if we click it on a check mark, it's going to turn it on specifically for this game, but the system settings will still have it off. And then we can click it off, and then system settings back on. So that's what those boxes mean. Okay, and so from this point, you should be able to start booting up games now. I'm going to show you how to add the custom textures as well as the cheat files also, so stick with me here. And I just want to show you this kind of booting up also. And there we go. So yeah, so stick with me here and we'll get that stuff going. So the first thing that we're going to do for setting up custom textures is setting up the folder location. So you can do that by coming up here to the settings and then graphics. And if you come over here to texture replacement, this is going to be your folder location of where your texture folders are going to be stored. So I can show you guys here by going to open, and then each of these folders are a game. So we can actually see that game here. If I close out of the settings. So 20911, 20911. So that's our custom texture pack for Shin Megami. So you'll see here if I open it up, and there's our custom textures. So that's kind of how you're going to place your custom texture packs, and I'm going to show you how to actually go about downloading these here now. Okay, so here we are back at the GBA Temp website. So this is a link to the HD texture pack for Shin Megami here, so I'm going to click on that, and that's going to take me to the form post for the HD texture pack for Shin Megami. And then here's the download link also. So we can go to that download link, and we're going to click download just to show you guys here and then that'll download the zip file now once you get that zip file you're going to extract the folder to where i showed you in the settings before here under graphics and then the folder here and then you'll see that shinigami tensai game there so if i click on show in folder there let it confirm its download open the zip and there it is so you're going to just extract that folder there into that location of your texture pack so yeah all right and so once you've got your hd texture pack downloaded and extracted and you put the folder in the appropriate location which is here at this location um, you're going to come here back to the graphics settings and you're tick on load textures, async texture loading, and precast textures, and you should be good to go. And so you could also tick these on and off mid-game to see if they're loading and unloading. So that's a way to verify that the textures are actually working as well. So, yeah. right. so the next thing I want to show you is cheats here. So we're going to come up to tools at the top here, and then we're going to open data directory. And then here we're going to see this cheats folder. And then yours may have a bunch of cheats in it like mine. It may have nothing. But this is where you're going to be putting a .pnach file. So each one of these is pretty much a cheat file for a specific game. So when you're looking for a specific game, you can find that code here by right-clicking on your game and going to Properties. And then it'll be the CRC code here. And so for me, I'm looking for this game. So I can right click and copy that. Go back to our cheats folder here. Go to the search. Right click that. Paste. Hit enter. Whoop, there we go. And then there it is. So if I open it up here, we'll see the one cheat there. And that's our widescreen hack. Mm -hmm. So when we boot the game up here, get that going. 
you should see the one cheat and one widescreen patch is activated. So that's getting your cheats going there. And so I will show you kind of where to download those also now. There's going to be a lot of different places you can find these things probably. Um, so kind of Google search and jump around and see what you find. But yeah. So one area we can find cheats is the PCSX2 forum posts. So on this post here, it has a bunch of games and their cheats as well. It doesn't have all the games, but this is kind of a simple area you can come to and find a good list. So all that you're going to do is when you find the game that you want, you're going to come here to the code. You're going to copy all of the code that you want. You're going to right click and copy. You're going to open up a new Kwrite file or a new Word file. You're going to paste that into the file and you're going to come here and say save as and then you're going to save it as a .pnach file and so make sure you do that into the location of the pcsx2 and cheats that i showed you before of where we have all the other pnach files so yeah and then also the name too as i showed you for the game description and the properties make sure that name matches that crc code here whenever you're saving it so that crc code needs to match whatever the game one is so yeah so moving on to the 60 fps codes here so for 60 fps codes the easiest way i'm going to say to find them is going through people's youtube videos and then seeing if they posted the code in their video or their description there or somebody did down in the comments because when it comes to 60 fps codes they're not going to be perfect right off the bat and it's really hard to find like kind of codes already ready in PNACH format that you can just copy and paste right in. Because what I'm going to show you here is if you go to a game for the code, and it loads up here, I'll just go to something that's already loaded. So you'll see here that this code is not the same as the PNACH files that we're saving here. So this code is going to need to be converted. The program that's usually used to convert that code, you can see here those lines there, and then it's converted into the patch equals one, which is what we're saving here in our cheat code file. Um, this program only works on Windows, is what I'm seeing right now. I can't get it to run on SteamOS, but if anybody does, please let me know. And then they also talked about a different way to do it, which is through this gamehacking.org website. I'll need to run through this and do some tests to figure it out, but this is probably going to be its own separate tutorial into converting codes into proper PNACH format. So I'll do that at a different time, but for right now, I'd say run through people's YouTube videos, try to find the codes that they're using, and yeah. All right, so from this point, we're finished with our general setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to our download folder where we downloaded our app image, and we're gonna add it to our Steam library by right-clicking on our app image, saying add to Steam, and then letting that go through its thing there. And there it is. And then we're gonna hit play just to test it out, make sure it boots. And there we go. So I did have to restart Steam for this to take effect as I was trying to add it and then start it, it wouldn't do it. So if that happens, restart Steam, close it down, add the file to Steam, and then restart Steam. And that worked for me. So hopefully that should work for you too if that error comes up. But yeah. All right, and so from this point, I'm going to shut down PCSX2 here, and then I'm going to go into the gaming mode just to make sure it works on that end, too. All right, so now that we're booted back up into gaming mode with PCSX2 selected, we're going to hit play, and there we go. So at first, when I was trying to boot games, it was giving me an error that read like this, like I don't have permission to access that location. So what I did was I had to go back into desktop mode, copy one of my ISO game files, put it onto my internal SSD, since I currently have them on my micro SD card right now. And then I booted it that way through my internal SSD. And then everything started working after that. <laughs> no idea why. But uh, pretty much I went back into gaming mode. And now when we click into all these games here, they'll all run normally. So I'm not too sure what the permission error was on that extent. But if you run into that error, that's kind of the fix there. So yeah. So let me know if anything comes up down in the comments, and I can help you out with that, too. And all right, so from this point, you guys should be good to start playing PS2 games. Uh, if you run into any problems throughout the tutorial, let me know down in the comments, and I'll try to help you out and get it fixed. And yeah, so enjoy, you guys.